Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. You want to stay strong, you want to feel strong, and you want to certainly be involved. But um, there are times when you just got to back off and you got to be patient. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest E-Commerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, we're welcoming to the show a self-described OG, that's original groomer, Michael Vaughn. He's coming to us. He is the founder of V76. It is a hair care product brand. Uh, he's going to get a lot more into that here in a minute. Uh, but first, uh, we talked a few weeks back. We got on the phone and had a little pre-interview about this. And there's a really good story, a fun story about where where Michael ended up to where he is today. So I'm going to kind of hand it over to you today. And uh, you can take it away. Well, it, it can be long or it can be short version. But I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Um, grew up in Ohio on the Great Lakes with a single mom, oldest of three. And uh, it was her determination to get me to college. And I did not know at the time what I was going to do in college. I had, I had no idea, but I also wanted her to, I wanted to uh, fulfill her wishes and uh, ended up going down to Ohio State. And um, like I said just a moment ago, I just didn't know what I was doing. So I went through a period of time where uh, I was enjoying myself getting acclimated, but I was just burning through her money and, and everything she was doing to keep me there. And I noticed there was a couple of guys that would show up occasionally to some of the parties or get togethers and they just looked really very cool. This was like in 1978, around there, 79. And they just, they were very fashionable and they looked really cool. And I just at one point went up to them and said, what are you guys, what are you studying here? You know, trying to find my own way. And they said, no, we don't go to school here. We come to the parties because it's a lot of fun, but we actually go to, to a beauty academy downtown. It hasn't changed much, by the way. Uh, everyone goes to the parties at OSU. Uh, they don't go to school there, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I joined them for lunch one day. And some weird way, it just kind of made sense to me that um, and I didn't realize till later what it was that triggered me. But I, um, I thought in a couple of years time, I could be licensed. I could be a hairdresser and go anywhere in the world. And at that time in my life, I wanted out of Ohio. I was playing music with a band called the Pony Boys out of Cleveland. Trent Reznor was getting started with a band called Slam Bamboo. And we just kind of thought that was going to be the next place uh, where music was going to generate from. It was happening in, in Athens, Georgia with REM and Pylon and B-52s. And then it shifted over to Seattle. There was a big scene happening there. And we just kind of felt like, you know, Cleveland had so much going on with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame being uh, there, coming there. And um, we thought we were going to be the... The next big thing. So I was playing with this band, but I was going to school and we were going in and out of uh, New York and various places touring with national acts. We would just get on these bills and open for them. And I was in New York one weekend and got spotted at a, we were playing CBGBs and I was spotted at a club called the Nightlight um, or Limelight. And uh, somebody asked me what, what agency I was with and I didn't understand what she meant, but I said, come to the gig. And she was uh, she sent me a bunch of information and, and had me fly to New York a week later to, to um, embark in this modeling career. So she was wanting to know, um, you know, my availability and all that sort of stuff with modeling. So after a few things, a few jobs in New York and some tests, I had the opportunity to go to Europe. And uh, I thought, sure. And at this point, I had already graduated from uh, beauty school. So I had started cutting hair, dabbling in it up around Oberlin College. And... Uh, my uncle, who was kind of a father figure at the time, said, go, and you can always cut hair, but this is this will be a, a period of time where you can go over there and live and learn the currency, the culture, the language, all that sort of stuff. So I did. I embarked on London, Paris, and Milan for about four years. Uh, my wife came over to study in Geneva, and she wanted to be in international business. She wanted to move back to New York after four years, but I was there too for her. And I said, I didn't want to live in New York. I want to go back to Ohio and fish. Um, but she said, you're already working in New York. So it makes sense. So I came back to New York. Uh, I was going to about to get married to her, which we did. And uh, 
just felt like I didn't want to leave. I did. I think at the time there was a big contract to go to Tokyo for six months or something, guaranteed money. But I didn't want to leave her in New York because we had never lived here before and we'd never been here before in that capacity. And um, so I just kept picking around, doing uh, odd jobs here and there, flying to Chicago, various places. But I just didn't feel like it was a real career path. Now I was into my seventh year kind of, of modeling and um, playing music on the side and stuff. And uh, she said, why don't you get back into hair? You're always good at hair. And I remembered when I was in Europe primarily, but sometimes in the States too, I was doing a lot of hair campaigns at the time and meeting some really amazing hairdressers through the, through uh, Vidal Sassoon's group, Trevor Sorby, Allen International, all kinds of uh, big beauty brand names. And um, I would be in these ads, but these amazing hairdressers that I formed relationships with um, would do my hair. And I started talking about hair. And a couple of times they said, why don't you ever get back into it. You'd be great at it. So I remembered that and I reached out to them and uh, they said, you should check out a place in the city called Bumble to Bumble. It's just starting and they've got a lot of momentum. A lot of cool things are happening. And back then it was about magazines and it was about runway and celebrity and stuff. It wasn't so much internet, YouTube, but it's all changed, you know, in a huge way, not just in the story I'm telling now, but also in the capacity of, uh, business in, in, a, in, a, in a huge way in my industry. So they were known for that. And they were known for uh, giving credits in the spines. You'd open up a magazine and you would see like, you know, what clothes are they wearing? That's a really great looking outfit. Or, you know, who did the hair? Who's a photographer? And Bumble was getting a lot of that. So I um, decided to go there and uh, was hired. And then uh, a lot of the work they were doing was female work with magazines and the rest of it. And then when some things would come in for guys, um, they said, we, you know, I said, I could do this. And they said, all right, well, then uh, let's, let's get you set up. And I started doing things with Rolling Stone and GQ, just doing models and um, got an agent, put together a portfolio, all that sort of stuff. So you start getting busy in that capacity. And then before you know it, it's other magazines like Vanity Fair or Time, and you're doing um, actors, and then you're doing musicians, and then you're doing presidents and senators and, you know, just people. But my niche was men's grooming. And I felt like I knew it because I kind of was on the other side of it for a while. So those situations really didn't um, intimidate me at all about being with a, a photographer like Herb Ritz or Annie Leibowitz or Mark Seliger and, um, and grooming these guys because I just felt like I knew it looked good on a guy. And then from that, um, Bumble's product was born with the help of uh, Salon, which made it really popular and cool at the time because it was coming from hairdressers and not from labs or from companies. And then, uh, but I always was sort of thinking on the side, like, what would I do different if it was mine? And, and what's this, what does men's grooming mean to me? It's, it's always been more than hair. I'd go on a photo shoot or I'd go with the guy's about to go on stage or something and I'd be looking at everything. I'd be looking at his belt, his look, his feeling. Um, his skin, his hair. It was more than just being this hairdresser guy. And that's where the word grooming kind of fell into it. And yeah, so I wrapped myself around on what grooming was. And it was skin, it was beard, it was it's gifting for guys and it's in its hair. So it stands on these sort of four pillars uh, in my mind of um, like well-groomed in the line is the hair, uh, boldly barbered is the bearding, Face forward is the skin stuff, and well gifted man is the is the other pillar, and that's that's kind of what we did about six years ago as we launched it with a uh, with a group called Luxury Brand Partners, who also was the um, the group behind Orbe, which um, has become a huge success, and then recently sold to Kao, a Japanese company, um, and uh, it also owns Goldwell, a big color company. So I'm still with them. R and Co is with them. There's uh, IGK is another line that's with LBP. And uh, yeah, I decided to go with people that knew how to do this. And, and administratively, there is a core of LBP that was with Bumble at the time. So when they Bumble sold and they left, they was on a, they were in a non compete for a couple of years. And then when they came back into the scene, it made sense for them to do artist driven product. And Bumble was an artist-driven product that was a huge success. So then they um, had a relationship with Orbe, and they had a relationship with me, Garen, a few of these other guys. And um, 
and they uh, they wrap themselves around having these these artist driven brands or they being a, a huge success for them. If you're struggling with scaling your sales, maybe Electric Guy can help. Our team has helped our clients generate millions of dollars in additional revenue through our unique brand scaling framework. You can learn more about our agency at electriceye.io. That's E L E C T R I C E Y E.io. Mesa is the all in one answer for automating the everyday challenges of running a Shopify store. With automation, you can focus on the bigger picture, knowing that everything is still getting done reliably and efficiently. Join successful brands like Mudwater, Chubby's, and Golden that learned how to use clever workflows to get more done without more overhead. Whether you need order details in Google Sheets, products added in Etsy, or customer information updated in your CRM, Mesa connects your data where it's needed most. To put it quite simply, Mesa is a better way to work. Browse pre-made templates for Shopify's most popular apps to get your first automation up and running in minutes. Search for Mesa, that's M-E-S-A, in the Shopify App Store and download the app today. Our partner Rewind can protect your e-commerce store by automatically backing up your business critical data. Rewind should be the first app you install to protect your store against human error, misbehaving apps, or collaborators gone bad. It's like having your very own magic undo button. Trusted by over 100,000 businesses, from side hustles to the biggest online retailers like Nix, Paul Mitchell, and Pampers. Best of all, visit rewind.com slash honest e-commerce to get your first month absolutely free. That's rewind.com slash honest e-commerce. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up your free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com slash honest. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash H-O-N-E-S-T. You're being a little bit humble here. I'm going to list off some names here uh, of people that you've worked with in the past, including Paul McCartney, Lenny Kravitz. Uh, you did the cover of GQ's Men of the Year. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of you know clout behind your name in the industry. Um, so to have a, a partnership with uh, a company, uh, you said it was Lifestyle Brands Partnerships, correct? Uh, Luxury Brand Partners is the name that they formed. It was Orbe. And then with the success of Orbe, they wanted to become sort of like a, a mini Estee Lauder in the beauty industry with a nail company called Smith & Colt. r and Co. was uh, the cele- celebrated hairdresser Garen's um, company with Howard McLaren. Also, uh, me with men's grooming, IGK became another sort of Sephora brand, but it's, it's all in this sort of beauty. There's a makeup, there was a makeup line in there as well, but they had, um, uh, maybe seven different companies, uh, at a time underneath there that they were germinating and, and, um, mm-hmm. and uh, conceiving. And, and again, you just hope to, to farm the right, to f- walk the right path and, and be successful and, and or sell at some point. I didn't get into this to sell it, but, um, but to be in it, and and it, it does feel good to, to still be standing, especially with all that we've been through with COVID, with all of all of the all of the change that I spoke about earlier with digital media and, and education and what that looks like. You know, I'm not driving, we're not flying from city to city with barber shops and other hair salons giving um, these classes, which which is really valuable because it's a face to face. You know, you're really on top of something, teaching someone. You also get to um, entertain. Later in the evening, get to know these uh, these different people, their families, their way of life. Whether it's in Austin, Detroit, Phoenix, Boston, San Fran, wherever, and that's all shut down. You know, it's it's come to a halt because of COVID. And as we get back into the whole education type of thing, now you look at the internet, right? Everybody's educating everybody. Everybody's got a platform and a brand. So that's that's what makes things noisy is sorting out what's credible and what's just become a a popular idea for a guy that used to be an insurance salesman and now is in the hair pace business, you know. Absolutely. Well, with with you know, I think there are are probably some listeners out there um, that do have a bit of clout about them in some way, shape, or form. Maybe some Instagram following or some other network or or just a previous life they had some kind of notability with what they were doing. 
And I think that a lot of people want to capitalize on that that reach that they have. And one way to do it is uh, kind of like a partnership of what you've established uh, yourself. Um, what should people be looking for um, in partners to help them kind of build out these types of companies, like a product company based upon some uh, you know previous experience? What I've learned from it is that I think that if I go back, I may have I may have hit the market with too many SKUs right off the bat. So uh, again, I was wrapping myself around this word grooming, and I didn't want to just put out like a hair paste or a couple of shampoos. I wanted to engulf on what I was doing when I whenever I would leave the salon and go on set. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot when you all of a sudden have you enter the marketplace with twenty three SKUs. You know, you're going to have those big sellers, and you're going to have ones that just don't move, right? Just like your bathroom or anybody listening right now, you've got, you go to your bathroom and open up the medicine cabinet or look what's in the shower. And it's not everything of one brand. I mean, very rarely do you see everybody with, with just one brand of something. You've got uh, certain deodorants that you like. There's a scent that you like from a cologne. There's toothpaste that's different. It's, it's all these things just kind of get mixed in. And, um, so being aware of that, you know, also keeping, keeping in mind when you are a startup to, to be a startup. And uh, and think like that, and um, so that's that's kind of a lesson to myself. I wanted to do both with the salon that I'm, I own now with partners, uh, as well as the product company. I wanted to get into business with people that knew this, and they knew what would happen when there's a supply chain freeze like there is right now, or there's raw materials that aren't available. Uh, in the case of the salon, um, dead months like August in New York City when everybody's in the Hamptons or away. And then when it's crazy leading up to Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything. So just it helped me a lot to, to um, just with a confidence standpoint to, to be with people that understood what it was that uh, I was entering and what I was going through. But there's still mistakes that happen. There are assumptions that happen. We, we think we're going to be it's going to be a home run in some cases and money gets spent and, and then you got to pull back and um, it's navigating through all of that. You want to you want to stay strong you want to feel strong and you want to certainly be involved but um there are times when you just got to back off and you got to be patient entering into a partnership like this um you know where does the division lie like who takes responsibility for kind of what pieces of the business um from a creative standpoint it's me you know i'm the one that things would run through me i touch these products i come up with these fragrances i'm the one that decides on uh, all of that the way it looks the way it feels the way it touches the experience of the product um I trust the um, through discussions and the board meeting and whatnot, whether we go into distribution, whether we go into specialty shops, whether we break that 23 SKU line up, because at the beginning we were saying, as was Bumble and Orbe, if you want to go into business with us, then you can go three deep on the shelf, six or 12 deep or whatever, but you're taking all of it, right? And with that comes this umbilical cord of education, this, this relationship that, that uh, as they said at Bumble, we said at Bumble at the time, um, like an inch wide, but a mile deep. So it wasn't everybody that was involved. So in, when we went after, out of the gates, we went after the top salons because of this history of Bumble and Orbe in the country. So we were in some like some of the top salons in all of the cities in the country and Neiman Marcus. And that that was a, a really nice crowning that I, I loved having. And it was about a year or so later where... We're sitting in a board meeting and my wife says, uh, well, some of the numbers weren't coming in the way that we were projecting them to. And she said, I have a question for you uh, to the board. Can you run some data on how many men in America in numbers like we want are going to these hundred dollar plus haircut places that are the best salons in America? And how many men are discussing their grooming concerns at the Neiman Marcus counter? And it was a huge wake up for us that men are different than women and men shop different than women. And uh, in figuring that out and navigating through where are the guys, but in numbers like we want when you launch a company like this with partners, um, they weren't at these $100 plus. There were plenty of people going there, men in the cities, but not across the country, not not where we really wanted to drive revenue. Absolutely. So definitely getting uh, some more market research under your belt about where your customers may or may not be is always some good advice that we hear here on the show. Um, is there anything else that you kind of remember from getting the product off the ground and especially the online store off the ground? 
um, that comes to mind? Maybe even like mistakes that you guys made along the way that you kind of want to help the listeners avoid. Well, you you just have to stay on the fact that, you know, things like um, Salesforce came out and Shopify came out and, and all of these things, you know, started to gain momentum. And we perhaps at the very beginning weren't looking in that direction, doing things really more direct. Again, trying to keep that hand touch uh, right into the offices. So fulfilling orders, making sure inventory was there when you needed it. Um, taking advice from from any of the big uh, vendors that we have now. For instance, at Amazon, like where you can find anything these days, one of the things that they said, just make sure that you have the inventory, make sure it's in stock. Because if any of us are looking for a, a specific moisturizer or something for their hair, and they're online doing that, if, if it's not in stock, then they're going to go to another company to try and find something that mimics or gets close to what it is that, that you have. And either they'll hate it or it might replace something where you had the guy, right? Mm-hmm. So those kind of lessons are, are, are elementary, but they're huge. And it's, and it's difficult to manage sometimes inventory when uh, you're up against certainly what we've been up against over the last couple of years. Websites, uh, same thing. They're going to morph into different um, user-friendly um, there's this thing called Loom, I think, that uh, just came out that, or, or maybe it's been out, but uh, I've been shown it. People have been showing this to me recently where you, you actually pop up on these pages and have a chat about whatever it is that's in the background that you're talking about. It could be a haircut, it could be a new product, it could be just a, a new jar, but you're, you're actually there doing it instead of just having copy up or having to send somebody to another YouTube site or something. It's, it's just right there. So... Staying current with all of that, uh, websites constantly changing, um, keeping it fresh with, you know, music choices to what you've been up to. to um, yeah, and I just think that it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a living, breathing thing that you can't just sit there and go, well, that's what it was. And now we change it to this. Well, that's true, but it's still changing, all the time changing. And we meet every week to discuss a lot of this stuff. And um, yeah. It's <laughs> it's been a journey, that's for sure. Absolutely. Is there anything I didn't ask you about today that you'd want to share with our audience? The only other thing I would share was like I was saying earlier, what was interesting for me was that I ended up uh, trusting my hands. So I was a drummer since I was a little kid. And at 14, I made my first bit of money with a, playing on a 45. And, and at the time of going to college and breaking off, going into beauty barber school, I... Um, I was trusting my hands. It was something tangible for me mm-hmm. that I just could could do and touch and feel. And and, uh, and that's just something I realized much later. So a lot of my hashtags are trust your hands, you know, whether it's somebody that's an architect or an artist or works with his hands. But um, a lot of us, we just we have all these different journeys that, that seemed to be the one that uh, made sense for me. I still work in the salon. I still have these conversations. I get my questions answered. Um, this is, you know, when, when it comes to guys and, uh, and finding out, they, they really do open up. And it's something that's tricky because not all men are that, are that vocal about things that are personal. And it's not funny when a guy has an issue with thinning hair or he's balding or graying or he's got unwanted hair or uh, whatever it may be with men's grooming. A lot of sites and a lot of different companies approach it with girls and, and laughter and joking and manscaping and all this stuff. But when you really get down to a guy wanting an answer for something that's an issue to him or to change his look simply. It's, it's important to him and it's serious and, and it, it really does uh, give him confidence when you get it right. Absolutely. I, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today, Michael, and sharing your journey with us. Uh, where should people go to check out the products? Uh, V76.com. It's a new fun website. I'm sorry. It seems like uh, here at the apartment, they're cleaning the hallway. <laughs> it's mowing or doing something. Um, V76.com is the website and um, interactive. And uh, you know, we, I talk and answer questions and all that good stuff. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, my fellow Buckeye. <laughs> nice to meet you, Chase. You as well. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.